Yo, Elliot, as an athlete and coach, I feel like I live a double life in that I have to train for my own goals as well as keeping my athletes needs and goals in mind. Part of me thinks that it's selfish to put too much attention to my own training, but I was recently told by a colleague that if I invest in myself as an athlete, it's also an investment in my business because I will always have those achievements and credibility. What is your experience in balancing your training for your sport and growing your business? I think your colleague was right. In fact, I have my own experience with regard to that because when I started uh, strength camp, I also began competing in strongman, right? So I was a football player coming up and I wanted to continue playing football, but it just wasn't in the cards for me. And I wanted to train football players, right? And so it was almost, it was basically impossible for me to keep playing football and then to be a strength coach, right? So I kind of, I reconciled that, but I had this athletic hunger in me, right? Like I'm an athlete. I want to compete. I want to do stuff. And so I was so blessed to have found strongman. And I got to tell you, I started strongman training first, which was lifting stones, flipping tires, pushing cars, you know, all that stuff. And that's what strength camp evolved out of. It was, it evolved out of my, oh, I'm doing strongman. This stuff is cool. I bet it would help other people like fitness, you know, not everybody has to compete in strongman, but I bet strongman would be cool for people to train. Right. And one of the things I discovered was that my ability to train people with enthusiasm, to train people knowing what they're capable of and pushing them to the limit was highly available to me. I was a great coach because I was pushing myself first. Because I knew that by pushing myself beyond the boundary, and that, that going beyond the boundary was possible. Does that make sense? Because I'm pushing myself, I was harder on my clients. Now, I don't mean that you got to go beat up your clients, but I, and of course, you know, we got to take into consideration that I, not everybody's gifted. I know that I'm, I'm gifted. I'm gifted with strength and athleticism. So I can't expect all my clients to do what I do, but knowing that like, okay, there's a threshold that I'm willing to go past, or there are things that I uh, could do better. And I learn my way around them gives me in the trenches experiences that I can then transfer to my clients. And there are many times where I was working with my clients and just because I knew that I did it, I would say to them, listen, I know this is tough. You can do it. You can do it. But if I was weak, if I wasn't competing, if I wasn't pushing myself, if I wasn't pushing those boundaries, crossing those boundaries and training my face off myself, I know for a fact that I would have went easier on them. You know how I know? Because when I stopped competing, I stopped being a good coach. Not that I wasn't a good coach, but my ability to really pull the best out of my clients began to diminish because I wasn't pushing myself that way. I don't know, I don't know if it's, uh, this is legitimate, it's just my experience, but to the degree that you can care for yourself is going to be the degree to which you can care for others, right? Um, this is analogous to when you're in an airplane and they say, you know, you got, before you put the mask on the child, you got to put the mask on your first self first, meaning like, hey, you got to make sure you can handle this right now first. And then, okay, now I'm good. I know I can handle this. I know this is gonna be all right. I could help you out. Also, and I know this is, good, this is gonna, even contradictory, but it just shows you how backwards and wacky the world is that we live in right now. You don't want to go. I don't want to Let me put it this way. I don't want to go to a dentist with rotten teeth. I don't want to go to a fat doctor. Right. I don't want to go to somebody that doesn't have something that I that I'm there to get themselves. Why would I go to you who don't have now? Maybe you know all the stuff you have it in your head, but there's a big difference between knowing, understanding something or, or, or having the knowledge about something or the book knowledge about something and having practical experience being done there. The best generals were once soldiers, right? The best coaches, well, I, I say once, but to keep it sharp are still athletes, right? You, you got to stay sharp. You got to stay sharp, boys. How is it? Let me, let me use, give you like another practical example in my life right now, right? Like, so I'm having all these conversations with you guys, right? I'm answering your questions and there are different things about business, athletics, 
marriage, family, women, all that stuff, right? The only way that I am integrous, the only way that I can maintain integrity with my position on the things that I'm speaking to you about is that if I'm in the trenches about it. Remember last time I was just talking to, I don't want to say his name, so everybody doesn't know on YouTube, but the last conversation I was having, I was speaking to our young man, our friend, about courting, right? And what would be the right way to go about finding a wife and marriage and stuff like that. The only reason why I'm so sharp about that answer, the only reason why I'm like up to date on that, and I'm like, okay, I got something for you. And I was delivering. I know that was a very impassioned speech I just gave. Is why? Because I'm dealing with that right now. I got three daughters and I'm thinking, I think I need to get married soon. So I'm reading books. I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm watching stuff. I'm, in fact, I just bought this DVD because it was out of print called Return of the Daughters. And I know this has nothing to do with what you're asking, but I'm actively engaged in the very thing that I'm trying to coach you on, right? And you know what this means too, with regard to me and you, I'm giving you advice on business. I get business advice, right? In fact, earlier today, I was on the phone with somebody who's giving me business advice, right? There's other guys that do what I do that know stuff I don't know. And I call them up or I ask them questions or I hire people. So I say, hey, can you give me a little, some tips? Because I know you're in the trenches too. And maybe you figured something out that I haven't figured out. So I think for someone to be a, uh, an advisor, right? They got to be living the thing. I even think this is in the Bible somewhere. And again, you know, I, I, I talk about the Bible and I ain't a Bible thumper. I, don't, I can't quote perfectly. But somewhere in the Bible, it talks about, I think it was one of uh, St. Paul's letters where he talks about what is a worthy uh, priest or bishop. And he says, the first thing you got to do is you got to look at his home, right? Is, and there's a few things he says, like, is his home in order, right? Like, does his wife and children respect him? Or does he have a, a, a contentious wife and disrespectful children? If his home ain't right, that, and, he, and, you know, they expect in this, in this tradition, the man is expected to be the priest, prophet, and king of his home. If you're not a priest, prophet and king of your home, your home isn't in order, then you have no business being a bishop or being a deacon or whatever it is that they were talking about in this, in this letter. He's essentially saying, don't have somebody lead the church, the universal church, if their home church isn't in order. You, my man, long story short, if your athleticism is in order, you're pushing the boundaries and you're doing your best personally, that gives you integrity that gives you credibility, and that gives you the impetus to say and do the things that you want to do in order to help your clients, bro. Rob says it's Timothy, 1 Timothy 3.12. So I wasn't wrong. It's in there, <laughs> right? He says, what is your, your experience in balancing your training for your sport and growing your business? I will tell you this, that they have to go, they go hand in hand for me. I have to be actively involved in something. I might not need to be winning trophies. I might not need to be, uh, you know, traveling the world, trying to break records. It's not the case, but I have to be in the trenches myself. If I'm going to be asking you to work hard, I have to remember what it's like to work hard. So that's my opinion on that, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.